Welcome to the show you didn't think was possible. Asian dish, Western dish, mash them together, and you've got yourself a Far East fusion. I'm Ryan, and today I will attempt to make euros in the style of Peking duck. Okay, first of all, let's get the name out of the way. That will be the last time I call it Peking duck. It didn't feel right when I said it, but it's probably the name most of you know it by. From here on out, though, I'll be calling it Beijing duck, because that's exactly what it is. Believe it or not, P-E-K-I-N-G is actually pronounced Beijing. It's using an old system to romanize Chinese. Now we use pinyin, which spells Beijing like this. At any rate, the dish is named after the city Beijing. When I lived in China, I frequently went out for Beijing duck. I could also go to the market and buy a whole amazingly cooked duck for as little as $3. Now that I'm living in Ecuador, duck isn't really an option for me. I'm sure if I looked hard enough, I could find it, but it would probably be pretty expensive. So today I'm gonna attempt to bring the flavors of Beijing duck to a chicken euro, the meat-filled flatbread. The first thing I need to do is come up with a marinade that captures the flavors of Beijing duck. The duck is actually marinated from the inside out. A paste is rubbed on the inside before it's cooked. To keep it moist, they fill the sealed up ducks with water as well. This kind of stews it from the inside while it's being blasted with heat on the outside, usually in a wood stove oven. The only thing you'd put on the outside would be a sort of braise that's mainly used to help crisp the duck up and give it color. But I can take the flavors of the paste and slightly adapt them to make a marinade that we can soak and cook our chicken in. I'm gonna keep this real simple. We need salt, acid, some sweetness, and some spices. First, soy sauce for some salt. I'll add a couple tablespoons or so. Second, about an equal amount of Shaoxing wine, which contains acid. This is important in a marinade because it helps to break down proteins and tenderize the meat. But Shaoxing wine also has an amazingly complex flavor profile, so it's also very much about the taste it provides. And I'll include a couple globs of oyster sauce, which will add a nice sweetness. I don't want to go too overboard with this because when we cook the chicken with all the sugars that's in this, it'll be the first to burn. Mix those liquid ingredients, and now we can add our dry ingredients, which is also the most important ingredient, Chinese five spice. It's a mixture of Sichuan peppercorn, cinnamon, clove, fennel, and star anise. I mean, anise. Old Chinese dudes believe that this combination of spices does magical things. Eating it can improve five of your abilities. It can make you superhuman. I don't really know about all that, but I'm gonna put in a teaspoon of it. A quick taste. I'm going to add just a bit of salt. And let's put in some oil, which will help intensify the flavors and help the meat stay moist as it cooks. Now I'll cut up my chicken. I'm using chicken thighs. Unfortunately, they have bones in them, so I'm gonna have to debone them. It's a pain in the ass, but I can keep the bones and make a bit of broth for some noodle soup. Plus, it's cheaper to buy the bone in chicken thighs. Quick lesson on deboning a thigh. These ones actually have part of the backbone attached, so it's a bit more difficult. I like to flip it over, take this flap and cut under it. Pop the bone away from the hip, I think it is, and cut it there to separate it. Then it'll just slit along the bone and peel it away from the thigh bone. And I'll just cut the thighs in half to make them a little bit smaller and toss them into our marinade. Now let's really get the flavor into it by massaging the marinade into the chicken. Really get in there. Get really deep, really deep in there. Whoa, oh no! Well, it took me all night, but I was able to get out of the marinade. What a crazy adventure that was. Funny thing is, it was a bit chilly, but I'm feeling great right now. Let's get back to cooking this dish. I don't have a rotating spit like this would normally be cooked on, but I'm gonna build a tower of meat and just cook it in the oven. I've got a wooden skewer here. I'll start with half an onion, which will be our base.
A bit crooked, but I think it'll be okay. And now we'll put the meat on. Uh, this is gonna take some time. Huh. Huh, there's something strange going on. I think... Let me try something. Oh my god, I've developed superhuman speed! Of course, the magic powers of the Five Spice, just like the Chinese legend says. Spending last night in the marinade must have given me five different powers. The tingling Sichuan peppercorn produces 50 vibrations per second. I think it's given me the ability of superhuman speed. This will definitely come in handy, but for now I'm baking this chicken in the oven at 200 degrees Celsius or 400 Fahrenheit for around an hour and a half or until the internal temperature reaches 75 degrees Celsius or 165 Fahrenheit. And you can't use superhuman speed for that. While that's cooking, we can start making our sauce. Beijing duck usually uses a very sweet sauce that goes really well with the savory duck, but I'm going the way of euros for this. I'm gonna make it tzatziki, which I think will add a nice freshness to the dish. I'll combine the juice of half a lemon, one clove of shredded garlic, about 250 milliliters of Greek yogurt. Now I need to shred some cucumber. Get out of the way, nerd. I forgot to grab my cucumber. Sarah, can you get a cucumber for me? Go to hell. Eh, that's what I figured. Oh, she actually brought it? I'll peel this and deseed it. I'm really surprised Sarah did what I asked her to. Hmm, let me try something. Sarah, come try this cucumber for me. It's working, it's working. I think I may have discovered another power. Of course, the cinnamon in the five spice has given me the ability to manipulate people's behavior with my mind. In ancient history, cinnamon was so highly prized, people would do anything for it. Okay, now I'm gonna add some salt, some black pepper, and a drizzle of olive oil. I'll give this a mix and let it sit in the fridge for at least a half hour so the flavors really develop. So normally a gyros is made with a flatbread, a pita, but Beijing Duck uses these super thin little wraps that are light and springy. I'm gonna attempt to make those. They start off with the dough, 300 grams of flour, and I'm going to slowly add 190 milliliters of hot water. I boiled it and then let it sit for about five minutes so it's quite hot. This is gonna slightly cook the dough and make the wraps less spongy so the filling doesn't soak through. I'm gonna stir this until it combines into a rough looking ball and I'll give it a quick knead adding a little bit of flour at a time until it's not sticky. Okay, it feels great so I'll set it aside to rest for 20 minutes. Hey Sarah, give me a foot massage. Okay, after 20 minutes, I'm going to roll this out and divide it into 12 pieces. Now we're going to work with four at a time. There's a trick to making these super thin. First, I'll flatten each piece into a disc. I'm gonna coat two of them with flour on one side and two of them with oil. Shoot, where's my oil? It's way over there. What? Oh. Oh my God, I have the ability to stretch. Of course, it must be the cloves. The clove tree is an evergreen that grows 12 meters high, stretching into the sky. Think of all the things on my body I could stretch really long. <laughs> uh, but now I need to focus. I'm going to oil these two. and then stack the flour side of these ones onto the oiled side of these ones. Then I'll roll them out. Quick flip and a bit more rolling. And I'll do the same thing with these stacks. Flour on one, oil on the other, and combine the two stacks of two into a single stack of four. Now I'll just roll this out as thin as possible so it's about the size of a tortilla. 
flour and oil should allow us to pull the pieces apart easily, but first we need to cook it. In a dry flat pan over medium heat, I'll cook it on one side for about three minutes, and then flip it and give the other side a minute or so. You're not looking to brown this at all. I actually did brown this a bit, but uh, it should be okay. Okay, so now it's going to be hot, but you want to immediately tear them apart, otherwise it could be difficult to separate them. It's not really that hot at all. I don't even feel it, but this is going to take some time. That's not bad. A couple holes, but you can see how thin that is. As I separate them, I'm going to cover them so they stay warm and don't dry out. And we'll repeat with the other stacks. That's it, those are ready to go and our chicken is pretty much done. I'm gonna pull it out of the oven. Well, my stack fell over, but it's looking pretty tasty. It charred up nicely. Wait a second, this is a scalding hot pan, but I don't feel a thing. Of course! According to Greek mythology, Prometheus used a giant stock of fennel to carry fire from Mount Olympus to Earth. The fennel in the five spice must have made me immune to heat. I feel nothing. So, we are pretty much ready to assemble now. I'm just going to let that cool over here. And I'll go ahead and use my superhuman speed to julienne some cucumbers, carrots, and green onions. And now we can shave the chicken. It's really smelling amazing. Yeah, you can taste the flavors of Beijing duck in that. The five spice comes through nicely and it's really tender. And now we eat. Take a wrap. A bit of meat, a bit more meat, some carrot, some cucumber, green onions, and the tzatziki. A beautiful package of deliciousness. Cheers. Wow, it really pops with freshness. Feels really healthy. It's almost like a fresh spring roll or a popia. The wraps are a bit thicker than they should be, but they're really tasty and they have a nice chew to them. I think the tzatziki was a bad idea, to be honest with you. It hides the taste of the chicken, which is the best part. I should have went with the traditional Beijing duck sauce. It's basically a hoisin sauce with some added ingredients. Yeah, I kind of miss that richness from it. But otherwise, I think it's pretty tasty. Might have to try these wraps for some other stuff. The chicken recipe is actually pretty easy too, so I'm sure I'll be using the techniques I've learned in this video again, even if I don't end up making this dish again. I guess that's it for this video. I made something delicious. I got four superpower. Wait, wait a second. Five spice was supposed to give me five powers. 
I never found out what powers the star anus. I, I mean, the star anise gave me. Oh well. That's a wrap. Cut it. Finally. I've been holding in a fart for like 10 minutes. <laughs>